in this section we are going to start chapter 2 of the text which is instructions language of the computer so in this chapter we are going to see how we can translate high level code or high level language into assembly instruction and then go on to translate that assembly uh, assembly code or assembly instruction into machine instruction that our hardware can understand So instruction set we already have discussed about instruction set what is instruction set instruction set is nothing but set of instruction for a particular architecture we know various architectures are available for example uh, students who already have completed a microprocessor they may have learned about x86 x86 uh, architecture uh, but in this case in this course we are going to learn mips architecture so the instruction set depends on the architecture that we are dealing with. The X8 instruction set for x86 is different than instruction set that is designed for the MIPS architecture. So different computers have different instruction sets but with many aspects in common. Even though we are saying that the instruction set for x86 and instruction set of MIPS are different but there are uh, there is there are going to be a uh, situations or uh, instances where some of the instructions of both these uh, architectures uh, might be same but this does not mean that the one uh, code or one assembly code of, uh, of uh, x86 can uh, can work uh, in uh, MIPS. this is not going to take place it is similar to uh, pro uh, in programming language like c and java if we have a code if we have written our program in c and then we started writing code in java then we would see that some of the syntaxes that we have learned in c are similar to the syntaxes that we are using in java but they are totally different programming language early computers had very simple instruction set that is uh, this is understandable early computers uh, had, very, uh, had very simple instruction set this is understandable because they are designed to perform simple operations that's why their instruction sets are simple many modern many modern uh, computers also have simple instruction set just to make the processing faster uh, modern computers uh, sometimes use a simple instruction sets mix instruction set used as example uh, throughout this book we already have discussed that we are going to discuss uh, we are going to use MIPS architecture so whatever the instruction that we are going to use or instruction set that we are going to discuss are based on MIPS and throughout this book this textbook we are going to use MIPS, uh, uh, MIPS uh, uh, instruction set Stanford MIPS commercialized by MIPS technologies large share of embedded core market where uh, for example application in consumer electronics network storage equipment camera and printers and so on so one we need to cons we need to highlight this keyword embedded core market or embedded market so uh, uh, this is this is important because we need to remember that these these architectures MIPS uh, are used for uh, used for designing embedded systems so uh, as it says that a large share of embedded core markets for uh, embedded applications are these are embedded applications so a mix processors are used in those applications but in recent years uh, it's not MIPS. we uh, we find arm arm processor that is used uh, that is mainly used in our embedded systems especially the mobile phone that we are using we find arm processor there so let's see what you have in the next now how can we perform our arithmetic operation in MIPS let's say we are trying to perform a add we are uh, we're trying to perform add or uh, and subtract uh, where three operands are there it's similar to this similar to this this is not by the way this is not the assembly code uh, MIPS assembly code but this is just an example uh, that shows the syntax uh, how how the syntax should work so this is our op code which is which uh, identifies what operation uh, the assembler should perform and then this is our destination this source one and source two so from this uh, entire instruction we could see that a is going to hold the result of b plus c instead of add we could also use sub we could also use sub the syntax would remain the same which suggests that 
all arithmetic operation uses this kind of syntax where you have that opcode and then destination you have the two sources source one and source two and why is that design principle one tells us uh, tells us the reason simplicity favors regularity so we uh, MIPS follows this format for all kind of arithmetic operation this makes the designer uh, the flexibility of concentrating on the uh, on one design and making the system work faster so let's see what is uh, what we have uh, uh, next so let's say we already know the arithmetic operation uh, format uh, the, just the general format so let's say uh, we have a c code this is our c code or should i say part of a c code this is not the entire c code let's say this is the this is the part of a c code so how can we execute how can we uh, not execute how can we translate this into mips assembly code so this is general format again this is not the exact mips code that we should be using in the assembler but this is just uh, telling us how we should approach so uh, in this case uh, uh, we need to remember that in this instruction uh, in this case we need to apart from this addition operation and this addition operation and then we need to perform the subtraction of the uh, addition that you perform the here and the addition that you perform here so the first job uh, the, uh, our first job would be to perform the addition here perform this addition and the and then perform this addition so here see t naught holds the uh, value of addition of g and h so g and a uh, we have g and we have h and this is our operator so this line this line performs this operation and then uh, we have i plus j here we have i plus j here so this uh, this instruction performs i plus j and holds the value in t1 now when you have the value of g plus h uh, that means this value and the value of i plus j what we can do we can uh, subtract this value which is uh, which we have stored in t naught and we have stored this value in t1 so uh, now we just need to uh, subtract t naught we need to perform a t naught minus t1 so this this instruction performs this and where the result goes the result goes to f see this is the f so the result goes to f see uh, this 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 syntax follows uh, whatever is written here whatever the code that we have this is not as i said this is not the mips code that we should be using in the assembler this is just I, uh, just identifying the operations and keeping the name as it is but these we we will see that these values are uh, these values are needed to be stored in various registers which we'll see uh, after a couple of slides but this is just to let you understand what the operations are taking place register operands all arithmetic instructions uses register operands as we have seen there uh, that uh, in case of uh, we have seen that a add we have written that add let's uh, sorry just let me erase this one uh, let me erase this one and select another thing uh, add t naught and then g and h i i told uh, in the previous slide that all these values needed to be assigned to a register that's why this it is called register operand all these values needs to be assigned or stored in different register g needs a register h needs a register and t itself is a register so what are the facilities that we have in the mips architecture in mips we have as it is say as it is written here mips has a 32 by 32 bit register file what this means 32 by 32 bit register file if i draw the diagram uh, here then uh, uh, probably the explanation would be much more easier so let me erase this one try to uh, draw it again uh, so so let's say uh, this is our oops i'm very bad at this so uh, let's try again sorry for this but 
uh, it's much better this time so uh, this is our register file and in this register file according to this we have registers here we have registers here so how many registers do we have uh, from from here to here we have 32 registers and uh, they are uh, from 0 to 31 and each of these registers each of these registers can hold they can hold 32 bit value so in MIPS we have 32 32 bit register and this one is called register file this is called register file this is really important uh, uh, to understand because uh, this is uh, where all the operations will take place not all the operations. this is where all the data will come and they will be stored temporarily or uh, tem in temporary register or the saved register and then the operation will take place uh, cpu will execute the operation but value has to come here first for any kind of operation especially for arithmetic operation as i have uh, written here uh, add t naught g h this g this g and this h they they need to be assigned to some of these register as i said that there are registers 32 registers and they're numbered from 0 to 31 but they also have some names as it is uh, said here but uh, before that let's uh, discuss this point use for frequently accessed data uh, with these registers in the register file and numbered from 0 to 31 as i already have told you and 32 bit data called a word now we all know that 8 bit uh, we all know that 8 bit is our byte but there is a, another term which is called word word is equal to here word is equal to 32 bit word is equal to 32 bit and why it is 32 bit why not less than 32 bit or more than 32 bit because the architecture that we are using is 32 bit which means our our register here the registers that we are dealing with these are the registers that we are dealing with can hold 32 bit value which means we can say that this word is a variable term because if the architecture becomes 16 bit then this would be 16 if the architecture is th uh, uh, 64 bit then this would be 64 bit so this is the variable length but since we are discussing 32 bit architecture so our in our case our word would be 32 bit now uh, coming back to the name of this uh, these registers so uh, i already have told you that these registers uh, are numbered from 0 to 31 but they also have names they, uh, they their name starts with a uh, letter t so T0, T1, and T9, they have uh, they have registers uh, that, uh, whose name uh, starts with S. And there are other registers like stack pointer, stack pointer, and then frame pointer. You have return register. You have a, in fact, you have a register which is zero, which always stays zero. It, you cannot change the value of this register. Then there are other registers when you are using functions then for argument you have a register uh, and then uh, then for return value you have b register so these are the uh, set of registers that we have in inside uh, this uh, inside this register file we have 32 registers and these registers are the name of these registers uh, some of them starts with t some of them starts with s and some of them are like this so uh, they, they have special purpose t registers starts with t are normally used for storing uh, temporary values values that may not be used later and registers uh, starts with s they are normally used for storing values that uh, can be used later in the program so design principle two smaller is faster we have limited number of registers but this gives us faster performance uh, if you had to select a ball from a small box, then uh, then it would be much faster uh, than compared to uh, selecting a ball from a really big box. So that's why we have limited number of registers. We have uh, we ha here we have limited number of registers, but this gives us uh, the uh, flexibility of a uh, high a higher accessing speed or a uh, processing speed. Now. Uh, 
coming back to the code that we we have seen a few slides back this is part of a c code uh, as i said uh, initially that so we need to perform this operation which is an addition operation we need to perform this operation which is an addition operation and then we need to perform the subtraction operation in this case even though in the previous slides when we are dealing with this instruction we we did keep this name unchanged when we are performing the operation when we are writing the add instruction we did uh, write something like that add uh, t not g h but this is not uh, this is this is something that is not going to work when you are trying to uh, use this code in the assembler you need to write it in a proper order and proper way and uh, the way is you need to assign these values into some register and this is what we have done here this is what we have done here uh, uh, we have assigned these values uh, these, these variables f to g that means f uh, to j rather uh, f g h i j to these save registers say see s not s1 s2 up to s4 now we are performing the operation now we are performing this addition operation where uh, we are storing the result t not uh, sorry we, we are storing the result of this addition uh, and uh, g g is in register s not a uh, sorry s1 and h is in register s2 i is in register s3 and j is in register s4 so uh, this is this this line this is performing this operation so t naught is holding the value of s s1 plus s2 and then t1 is holding the value of s3 plus s4 and finally we need to perform this subtraction operation and this is what the subtraction operation uh, this is what the subtraction operation is taking place so the subtraction operation is s not because f is in s not f is in s not so s not is holding the subtraction value and uh, what we are subtracting we are subtracting this t not which is this and then uh, subtracting t not and then t1 so this the result is getting stored in s not so this is what our final uh, assembly code would look like uh, mips assembly code by uh, so this is this is our uh, final mips assembly code of this this uh, c code or part of c code this is what uh, the assembly code would look like but by the way uh, our hardware does not understand this this part our hardware does not uh, would not be able to understand this we need to translate this uh, assembly code into machine code which is nothing but 0 1 0 1 uh, binary combination so we need to know how we can convert this but that is later but for the time being this is uh, for the time being this is the code of this c code